Hello, Cali College NDT folks, UT. Let's uh, do a nice, simple calibration of this five megahertz half inch in diameter transducer here. Also using their Epic 650 and an IIW block down here. First things first with this instrument, we're gonna make sure that we're uh, emitting sound and we can see a deflection on the initial pulse. Press down on the material and get some reflection echoes going. Now, what we have on the screen doesn't make any real sense. It's just squiggly lines on a screen until we assign some meaning to that, assign some value by essentially programming the instrument. Really, it's a standardizing the instrument to some standardized materials. So first things first, let's look at all the menus that we have possible to us. There's, I believe, five of these little subset menus here that you can cycle through with this next button here. We've got, I like to call this the basic menu, where this is just your straight up UT settings, right? Where you're going to have velocity, probe delay or zero offset. The way to tell the difference between zero offset or probe delay and display delay is notice it's unit of measures in microseconds and so is the velocity. So this will actually impact measurements. This will not. This one will lead you into a land of confusion. Avoid this one unless you are specifically using it for a good reason. Next under there is Pulsar, where we can change some of the voltages and dampings, pulse rep frequency into the receiver, where we're changing filters, which would change the receiver. And essentially, if you've got an amplifier nearby, you can put on a filter to where it blocks out, you know, high pass, low pass, kind of that business there. You want that to encompass your sound. So I kind of like 0.2 to 10 here looking the best. Trig, make sure your angle is set to zero. Another thing that that could impact is our measurements up top here. You'll notice we've got gate one, percentage of screen height, gate two percent, gate one thickness, and gate two thickness, which we could also call sound path distance. And we've got an auto cal button here, which we'll come back to. Then, after the UT settings menu, you've got your gates menu where you can change the start, the width or length, and the level of them, turn an alarm on, or just outright turn the gate off. Come into the setup and we can change whether our measurement mode is going on the edge of the signal or flank, some other instruments will call it. The RF, whether it's measuring on the negative or the positive RF, there's some reasons to change that when you get into some super accurate thickness for our purposes today, not important. Gate one's amplitude is measuring off its highest peak and then same for gate two. Next, display, measure, and insta. I'm not sure what insta is. Let's see if we dive in here. Display setup, that's where we're gonna make some changes to our grid, to our colors, to the VGA output if we want to broadcast this to a monitor. In the measurement setup, that's where we're actually going to go change, like whether we're measuring in inches. Do we want these numbers up here to be in thousandths or hundredths? If we go into reading setup, I've got it set to auto right now, but we can actually go in and change those values to measure, let's say we wanted to do gate one minus gate two, or if we wanted to do gate one depth or gate one uh, projected distance across the surface, all those are housed inside of that measure setup. In setup here, we're looking at just some general background details about the instrument, the clock, any software options that updates, things like that. Not important for us. The grid, I don't need a grid right now, but if we were using this as a thickness, if we were to turn on a grid and go back, we could use this as a thickness gauge as well. Next, you got your DAC and your code menu. We will come back and have a lab over making a DAC curve. And then you've got your file managements where you can save calibrations, record inspections, things like that. And then we're back home. 
to the basic menu. Really, super simple instrument here. If we buzz through all of these menus and make sure that we don't do anything silly, like use the shear wave velocity when we're using a longitudinal transducer, then uh, we shouldn't run into too much trouble. There's not many hiccups that this instrument can throw you if you are able to navigate through those five menus. Over. One thing to note also, we've got the hotkeys on the left here. So if I hit the range, notice it changes everything down here and also highlights the range up here and allows me to move it. Notice also the scale in which my movements are made. If I press the check mark here with it, it puts some brackets around the range here. And then now my movements are much quicker. Okay, come down onto here and we've got initial pulse, repeat, back wall one, two, three, and four of those. Now I'm gonna turn some gain down, put that first back wall at about 80% screen height here. Now let's go 100, why not? One thing I wanna show you is a technique that you can use if ever somebody questions whether or not that's a back wall is to take some couplet on your finger Come underneath the block, tap, 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 tap. Notice my, right there, right there. And so that's one way that we can prove that, hey, that is certainly a back wall signal, and that is certainly going to be the thickness of my reference, which in this case is one inch thick. We've got a one inch thick IIW block here. Now, I'm certain it's not that thick, and my velocity is not that wrong. My zero is not down at all. And if I'm looking here, 22, 4, 6, 27-ish percent of 4, which should be around about an inch. Check it out, folks. My gate is measuring the very wrong thing. <clears throat> Check it out, folks. Our gate is currently measuring here in that initial pulse dead zone area. So we're gonna go into our first gate menu here, gate one, and we're gonna grab the start position and walk it back. Hey, notice the big change here. I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit as well. And we're going to go to gate two and we're going to pop it out over here to this. Eh, let's do it on the two inch signal. Why not? Oh, so we've got gate one thickness here. Gate two thickness here. I don't like that position because when I'm testing, I'm predominantly gonna be using gate one instead of gate two to look inside the material. Just a preference thing, honestly. So I, if I wanna move that, also I don't wanna confuse you folks because we're gonna be looking at both of these numbers and I don't want you to get caught staring at the big one. One thing that we discuss a lot the use of gates and how people can fall into a trap of not knowing what is happening with their sound, not knowing what the A scan is telling them. Meaning if I'm on a four inch range here, my two inch should be around 50% screen height. And I intuitively know that because I understand how the A scan should present itself based on the range and the percentages, right? And if I were to just get lost staring at these numbers, something like that gate measuring over here could just throw a loop in things that doesn't need to be. So typically a good exercise, a good thing to do is to block this off. Don't even use this for a, until you feel cool, calm, and confident with understanding what's happening on the A scan. But for our purposes today, we want to gain some accuracy here. Notice... 1.103 and 2.1. Well, that's not right. We need 
one inch and two inches. Notice we're both wrong here. We want both of those to measure 1.000 and 2.000, but for some reason, we've got 105 and 104. Oh gosh, it just moved again. Ah, that's okay. I just lost a little bit of coupling there. Over time, oh, what if I pick up and put down again? Ah, so what we're looking for is repeatability and pressure. Watch this. If I, if I white knuckle it, I can get down there. However, if that's not the pressure that I'm going to be maintaining when I'm testing, that's not really indicative of what I'm doing here. So I actually prefer the 103 and the 101 here. Now, what we need to do is adjust our velocity, folks. That velocity is like our speedometer for the ultrasound waves as they're traveling. And uh, like my truck right now currently, is the speedometer is four miles an hour off. So if I'm going 70 miles an hour in one hour, I will actually have only traveled 66 miles. I'll be wrong. So our speedometer on this instrument is currently wrong. And notice it is more wrong the further it goes. If I'm going 70 miles an hour in two hours, I will not be 140 miles away. I will be double the amount short. You see where we're heading here? Like check out the uh, three inch and four inch signals here with me. 109. Four, we're gonna have to bump the gain. 17, holy cow. So it's, it's getting more and more incorrect as we travel on down the line here. And what I wanna do is let's calibrate using the one inch and four inch. Like a AWS D11 would have us do. Notice as I begin to adjust this velocity here, it did move, it did. Still hasn't moved, it did just now moved so that four inch signal is going to move faster out of position than the one inch so what we're adjusting right now is the separation between each of these and once i have them separated by the same amount what we'll do now is add some probe delay or zero offset depending different instruments same name different name for different instruments but it's the same thing we're delaying notice my initial pulse everything's scooting over to the left on the screen here make sure you don't overshoot her there and bone y'all and we can come back to our gate menu and double check the three oh two nine nine five okay 194 sets five and six thousandths off. However, if I were to come in here and change the level of this and bump it up just a little bit. So there are actually different portions of that wave that we can measure. And making sure that we have repeatability when we are taking these measurements is very important. If I were to bump the gain up a bit, I bet I could get that to be three. What do you think? Oh, she doesn't like it. Watch this. Bump it up a lot. Go back. Gate level up now. I should be able to fine tune it a little better. Oof. Oof. She doesn't like it. But 5,000 is really in the scheme of things, you know? Not the biggest deal. So. That is the manual method of calibration. Let's go back, mess this all up again. Let's just go silly. Let's just go to like a weird thing. Let's go way high. Let's go accidentally like we're gonna do aluminum. But I know that this reference standard here is one inch thick, right? Into the auto cal, Let's produce a reflector from our one inch thickness. Begin with cal zero from a zero point. Oh, I can't, oh, from cal zero, boom. That's gonna be our zero point, essentially, if we're back to the speedometer and stopwatch 
idea here. That is when I'm going to start the stopwatch to determine the speed of that sound wave, and I know that this material is one inch thick. So from my zero, bam, one inch, and then I want it to record the velocity or speed of the sound from there to here, four. So from one to four, hit done. That measurement's gonna cycle. Make a big switch here. We'll go to the gate one start position and bring her back. Just a thousandth off, I bet if I wiggle a little bit, reduce the gain a little bit, I'm all right with a thousandth here. But um, So moving that gate, we're looking at 999 and 305. Two's dead on. Three depends on where you're measuring in the wave, and four's dead on. So there's manual and there's automatic. Either way, we come back to our velocity, bow, 0.314 inches per microsecond, and our zero applied just a little bit. Hope you have enjoyed this basic calibration video using an IIW block and the Olympus Epic 650. Tune in for our ultrasonic series, folks. We have a lot of great things in store, a lot of theories and concepts that we are going to put to the test and visualize together, and I look forward to seeing you in our next one.